Hello everybody, you're welcome to a brand new beautiful episode of Fake News Show. You know how we peruse it, you know how we run things, you know how we rock it here. On this show, you know how we do now. We tell you everything about fake news, what's fake news, how do I identify fake news, where is it from, how does it affect you now, how they take affect me, how we can avoid it, report it, a whole lot more on this show. That's how we roll. On this episode of Fake News Show, we're going to be using as journalism. That's why we're looking at journalism and fake news. So fasten your seatbelts, the way you usually do. Call your friends, gather around, because it's time to rock and roll. We'll be right back after this short message. Are they come? Welcome back, it's Fake News Show, and I'm your host, Frank Donga. In the past, news and information used to come from traditional media, you know, television, radio, newspaper, notebooks, lecture. But with the advancements of technology, things have changed. Everything doesn't change now. Now we have search engine, you have social media, you have online library and the likes. So this internet now, a lot of people don't blame them, say, now they cause misinformation or disinformation or fake news. You know, enter so here, social media, internet. Let's talk about hey, information. Where is journalism? Are journalists still credible sources of information? Or is journalism generally a credible source of information? That's what we want to be looking at. Hmm? Journalism and, and the fake news and the journalism profession. What is the role of journalists in all of this fake news pandemic? Where they trouble the world now because now pandemic or information don't become issue. We have a journalist we're going to be discussing with today. You'll be answering some questions on this issue. But before we go into all that one, we get plenty, plenty gist and enjoyment things. Information for you. Let's go on the street and see what people are saying about the issue relating to all this matter. On the street, now here we go. Are they come back? No, no. Not go anywhere. They have said. You see that flat? They kill three, four people. Whereas well, you are not there, you don't need to confirm it. That's fake news. That's fake news. Any rumor that you carry, that you don't know and you don't trust and you don't find out, is fake news. Fake news is a situation whereby somebody on his own just writes something and uh, misinform people, be it in the government or anywhere yeah, fake news is a a false information about somebody or about something that's what they call fake news you can give fake news a uh, wrong information about somebody at the end of it sometime if you discover or you find it and you find out what you were saying about that person what they were saying about it it was a lie okay. we are able to, to stop bloggers because bloggers are the most the, the most people that bring out fake news Every rumor is an atom of truth there. Hey, Naja, hello. Hey, Naja, the carry ass. You hear it, people, the gist for street, so what's your own opinion? You agree? You don't agree? Ah. So, what do you think? Hmm? Then tell us now, share your mind. You get a story where you want to tell us. Join the conversation now, get on social media, use the hashtag at uh, use the hashtag fake news show or use the hashtag stop fake news. Mm -hmm. I will I go get your story. If you tag me, tag CDD West Africa, follow CDD West Africa and let us know what you have to say. On this episode, we are looking at the challenges of fact checking information, mm -hmm. brainstorming, elaborating, elucidating, expatiating on fake news. Let's go because let's talk. Join us. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. You're watching Fake News Show. And you know, in this segment of Let's Talk, we bring you very important personalities, special guests to discuss with us on this topic of verifying fake news. Today, we have another special person in the person of Temilade Onilede. She's a researcher with the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism. Dubawa, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So tell us, what is fake news in your opinion? Fake news can be described as... Um information that are meant to mislead or to deceive individuals or general public. Mm. 
So if information comes out and is wrong, and I don't mean to deceive, maybe just to entertain, I'm not guilty of fake news. You are guilty of fake news. I'm not trying to deceive anybody. Yeah. It's just a joke. Still, you're still guilty of fake news. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Well, it doesn't even matter whether it's to deceive. Let me just put you like, okay, generally, the basic ones are whether to deceive or to misinform. Mm. The intended to misinform. That's misinformation. It, it doesn't matter whichever one. Whether you even decide to even just pick up something, write up something, and put it out. As far as I'm concerned, it's still fake news because you're in misinforming people. Mm. That is not right. It is not really, it's not correct. Whose fault is it? Whose fault is fake news? Who's mo most guilty? Citizens or journalists? Or the states? Citizens slash states. Mm. Journalists are saints. Yes, we are saints. <laughs> hey! <laughs> so much. Have you saints? It's in journal. How come? Because we've had journalists put out information that, you know... Okay, mistakes are bound to be made. So, in some cases when journalists make mistakes of um, putting out wrong information, you see they retract the messages immediately. Some, okay. not all. So what's the difference between what you do as a journalist and what blogs do? They give us information. As they hot. We give you accurate information. Sometimes they give us videos, join. They give you accurate videos too. Sometimes people are too slow. You don't break it as they hot. Because we have to confirm before we break it. Mm. That's where verifi verification comes in. Verification? Yes. So how do you identify fake news? Okay. We have various steps to identifying fake news. First one. You give me that paper, I look at it. The first thing I check is the headlines. Okay. Sensational headlines. Okay. Yes. They are always catchy. When you see them, they are attractive, like you really want to read. Now, where people make mistakes is if you don't, if you don't look beyond the headlines, the only thing you just see is the headline and you zoom off. The person might be trying to pass another message, but because you've read the headlines, you feel like, okay, I already know what's going on. The body of the, of the, um, the context might be different. So for every um, piece or article or story you're seeing or you've seen or you want to read, you look at the headlines. But most importantly, go to the body. Look through the context. Or the content, as rather. Are blogs a threat to journalism? Mm. Well, I say they are threats. But we won't say they are not threats. But basically, most of the information they dish out to people are sometimes wrong. Okay. Sometimes. I'm not saying, but sometimes. So I think they should inculcate the act of verification as well. What do you say? What would you think is the what would you say is the greatest challenge of journalism? Proper practice of journalism in Nigeria. What challenges are journalists facing? Attacks. What kind of attacks? Trying to get information or probably you go on your duty, you're on your duty and all of a sudden violence, something come up, comes up and you have to run, you have to do this. You are being attacked for getting information. By whom? The citizens or politicians? Or citizens I don't want to mention names. Mm. I don't want to tag. There are a lot of challenges journalists face daily. Getting news, writing stories. Even after publication, they come after you. Okay, well, this thing you wrote, you have to retract it. And if you don't retract it, you might be arrested. We've had, ex we've had experiences like that. If what you wrote is accurate. Is accurate. Yes, I stand by it. Why, why would anybody... Is there any law against that? There's no law against that. But, you know, people don't want to be... To be, what's the word now? To be painted otherwise. You know, they like to put image. their, yeah, image, thank you. They like to put their best, uh, um, best side out. So, so when we discover, okay, there's a particular thing you're doing that you're doing wrong, and we put it out, you'll be like, okay, no, you shouldn't do that. Mm. So they come after journalists. You work with, uh, or you're a researcher with the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism. Mm. We have investigative journalists in Nigeria. We do a lot of them. A lot of you? Yes. A lot. You are an investigative journalist? Yes. If you have a lot of you, why have you not been investigating all the problems that have been seen? All this chopping of money, allegations, because until tomorrow, alleged will be the word. Well, we've been doing that with our fact check stories. That's and what, what's really the greatest really challenge to investigating and holding leadership to account? Politicians, governors, institutions in Nigeria, private sector? Basically, it's getting information. Why? Because, you know, you can sometimes when we call, when we make calls, we're trying to verify something, we make calls to the person who made the statement, one of the processes of verification. We make calls to the person who made the statement, sometimes they don't pick up your calls, you know.
sometimes they dodge your calls, they see it, but they know that, okay, there's a reason why I'm, you're, being, you're being called, so they don't respond on time. So, so those are the challenges we face. How do all the investigative journalists or media outlets around the world do the investigations that we find it difficult to do the same in Nigeria? And how are they able to get those information, documents? Look, to look at WikiLeaks, for example. How are they able to get those documents that the government or the politician or the person or the We don't have a design? database in Nigeria. We have issues with data. We don't have accurate data base in Nigeria. Even if you, sometimes we, I want to do a fact check story, I go to NBS, sometimes I don't get the accurate information I want on NBS. So I have to do NBS, World Bank, um, put a lot of information, um, a lot of um, statistics together just because I'm looking for one thing or something to write up my story. So we have data-based problem in Nigeria. As a, as a female journalist who is also involved with investigative journalism, is it easier for you generally as a female to get information or verify stories in journalism in Nigeria. So you are going the gender bias yes, way? The, no, the gender uh, query way. <laughs> is there any difference? Is it harder for you? Is there any difference you? between us? Well, apart from the fact that I don't have long hair. Okay. And a few other differences. <laughs> okay, there know, is evidence. That is very, very clear. Glaring. <laughs> but, you know, in the process of doing your work, is there any difficulty that is peculiar to being a female journalist? First of all, my organization, we have, in short, we have something for women. We like speech search is a safe space for women. Mm -hmm. So my organization, we don't, ha we don't have gender inequality. I think we work as one mm -hmm. from that place. So that's a background for me. So for that, for that organization, I don't have a problem with that. But, you know, getting outside my organizations, of course, getting outside the organization, uh, well... It might not be that difficult because I'm a girl. Maybe I need some information. All I just need is to talk to you politely. Mm. And um, of course, uh, are I'll people get nicer, what I need. Are, are people nicer, nicer with females? I think yes. Okay. Let's look at technology. Is technology advancement a, a blessing or a curse or a, 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 a good tool or a detrimental development for journalism, especially investigative journalism? Well, both. It's a blessing because it enhances our work or it has been enhancing our work, makes our job easier. Mm -hmm. unlike before but now you know technology has made fake news viral you know, i can be in my room because i have a phone i have a device i can just concord stories and in a tickle of an high it's it's all over you just want me to just you know do some arrangements i put it out and before you know i have 500 shares a thousand two hundred that's because of technology that's what technology does. I would like us to also explore uh, how technology can be used for investigative journalism because I know a lot of people uh, they want to go into that and you know because Nigeria probably needs some of that right now. But we're going to take a short break. It's fake news show. When we come back, we we'll continue this conversation. Not go anywhere. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our expert is here to advise us on this disease. Uh, thank you very much for bringing me on this your notable show. You know, as you know, some of us are information bankers, a repertoire of knowledge. Oh, wow. We are merchants of information and education, uh, the colossus and the connoisseur of news. That is why it's important for you to be inviting people like us to tell you what is happening in the society, tell analyze, us. critically evaluate, elucidate, expand, and also investigate the situation. And I can tell you as an expert. I can categorically, nonsensically, and intellectually tell you what is going on in this uh, uh, coronation uh, uh, virulent disease of a matter. Ah, coronation. Okay. Is it not coronavirus? Yeah, that's what I said. You know, for the learned mind, that is how we call it because we know. So now, in this uh, uh, coronalia disease ah. is, is, uh, is situation, what is happening is that people don't know. They don't know. We must tell them. That is, of course, focus, focus. They don't know what is happening. It's okay. Because even a black man is very strong. The genes, the, 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 gen, the, gen, the genomic jury of a black man is very wait, strong. Wait, 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 wait. Where did you get this one? It cannot. So when you see a black man eating Uncle, apple, eating go. semo ever, pandem jam, drinking his drink. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> what you're saying. This is a radio station we cannot afford because most more children are <laughs> drinking his drink and doing his things. Not doing things, my brother. He is strong. He will resist all these things. In fact, let me tell you. Some of this information I give it to me by an expert, uh, uh, Dr. Toria, who works for the, the who is winning the country of when it comes to disease. 
But this your information is different too. That is what we are telling you, my brother. Information supers supersedes information. This man, my brother, that tell me, he work with uh, uh, United uh, uh, WHO Nation. That's, uh, uh, you cannot know them, because it's only a spot like us that deal with them. Uh, we have a doctor who is World Health uh, Organization staff on the line. Doctor, what's your information? Thank you very much. Coronavirus Best. disease can affect anybody. So it can affect everybody? Yes. Wash your hands thoroughly. We should wash our hands. It's just better to practice good hygiene. Stay away from crowd. My brother. Stay away from large gatherings. People in Africa are also falling sick, Abi. Yes. If you are sick, isolate yourself and call for help. No, Get the, information the to brother protect yourself. Me, is it, is WhatsApp group. You know, they say this in WhatsApp group. They even say you can bath with Ogogoro. You can cure this thing. Do you know this information now? It can wound some people. That doctor work with it. Shabi, you say your brother is working in WHO. Uh, Don't worry, any, we are... Any black man is my brother. Your brother works for you WhatsApp. The one that sent the information on WhatsApp. He's also a black man, so he's like... Hello, security. Uh, come to the studio, please. Uh, oh, God, it do, he does not reach give information. security. Shebi, he said... Um, this is the... He does Shebi, not he says your brother are giving information. See mosquito. Oh, God, where are you going? What happened now? See them. Welcome back, it's Fake News Show, and we'll be having a wonderful conversation with a researcher from the Premium Time Center for Investigative Journalism in the person of Timilade Onilede, a researcher from the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism. Uh, I also work with Dubawa, right? Yes. What's Dubawa all about? It's a fact-checking project on the Premium Times Center for Investigative Journalism. Oh. We do basically fact-checking. Like when they said the president was going to get married to somebody else, I mean, which is not really against his religious beliefs or positioning, but how do you fact check something like that? Well, as a fact checker, me hearing the words getting married, we already know it's fake. It's fake news. W wouldn't that be against your ethics? Because no, you're being skeptical when you, you listen, when you get information. That's one thing a fact checker should have, mm. Skepti skepticism. Okay. So when, when I heard the news, I was like, okay, Marriage, marriage. So we sat down, my colleagues and I were like, okay, let's let's see what's going on. So before you know, people started posting pictures, started seeing um, videos going around. So I asked my boss, and he was, she was like, let's just do something quick about this. That. So w what what we did was we just got in touch with some of our contacts in presidency, and eventually we found out that the thing was was fake news. So if it was real, for example, if I were a president and I had interest you know, in someone, and I was planning to marry the person. I wouldn't necessarily tell the, 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 the presidency It didn't take place, something. did it? it yeah, I know, that was afterwards. Place, yes. But I mean, if I were a president, I wanted to marry a lady. It's my decision, my personal decision. Yes, yeah, a personal decision, decision, but at least we would see it would take place. That would be a ceremony. But that would be after the news had, you know. So be, before then, to fact check if that information was right. That kind of scenario. So that's how we didn't dish that out immediately. Mm. So we had to calm down to get proper, in, to investigate properly before we write our story or fact check story, whether or not it is, it is true. Are there stories that you can almost never fact check? Have you ever been in such a situation that it's impossible to accurately Yes, if you don't have evidence to back the story up or to back the claims up, then we don't fact check opinions as well. But what if an opinion was made by someone, was a, de a, co a declaration or a confession or an allegation was made by someone based on his opinion? How do you fact check that if what they said affects the general public yes that is fact checkable that's one of the processes of, of fact checking if um, the statements made affects the general public and it is coming from a public official mm. or someone with a uh, large followership then that is fact checkable we have to check that statement we have to check if it is correct if it is true how do you check that well, do you call the person up? Or yes. Hello, or you send emails? We send emails. Okay. If, it, if there's no response, text. If there's no response, calls. And if there's no, we visit. If so if eventually we gate. visit, if, if you, you don't, don't open, open the gate. Not if I force to open gate for you now. If you don't open gate, what's you going to do? So we have database of what the person has been saying previously. Mm. So if it is in line with what the person just said, true or not, we write a story based on that. Then we give... The fact that uh, we, see, we give the fact that we've called, we've texted, we've sent emails, there was no response. So we use our basis. If a journalist now accidentally or intentionally puts out fake news, is there any disciplinary measure from anywhere, or is it just the law? And we rely on DSS and police. There and are SAS disciplinary measures. Okay. Let me give you instance. Recently, um, a news went viral on Bishop Oedepo, You know, was being denied visa at um, the U.S. Embassy. 
from I think I don't know which of the platforms started it, but um, this day, I don't know what someone mentioned, but this day. Yeah, it was on Twitter. Yes, on Twitter. So eventually, U.S. Embassy came out, debunked the news, and all, although we, too, we we contacted them, although we didn't get response in time, but eventually we wrote a fact check concerning that story on our site. Now, the repercussion of that story was that some of the editors were actually suspended. So, and the story was retracted, mm -hmm. but that was after the retraction, they were suspended, and they even published it on the site. So, so that is repa that yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's brilliant. That's, thank you very much, Demiladi Onilede, for joining thank us you on for this episode. Me. She's a researcher at uh, Dubawa, that's the Premier Times Center for Investigative Journalism. She's been talking to us about social media, fake news, and we're talking about misinformation, disinformation, and how to counter fake news. We still have more coming for you after this break. Not go anywhere. It's fake news show. <laughs> Welcome back. We just spoke with our journalist uh, guest on today's show, Temilade Onilede, Dubawa Premium Times Invest uh, Center for Investigative Journalism. And uh, we discussed a whole lot of things about journalism, you know, how do they access proper information, the challenges of journalism, a whole lot. And um, obviously, let's be honest, journalists uh, need to do better, citizens need to do better, the government needs to do better. When it comes to information dissemination, because we're not getting another thing as happened on communication, no. I have one to communicate well. Problem good day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, CDT West Africa, we have some coded points. Misinformation and disinformation. What we say we don't bust. Some matter they cast, and this one they don't cast. Stand by. We have this report for you. You thought it was true. Guess what? Look again. You go see for yourself, say you don't cast. More go. CDD fact check report. Fake news alert. Does shaving beards prevent against coronavirus? Claim. CDD spotted a news report by Today NG titled, quote, CDC, to be safe from the coronavirus, shave your beard, end quote, which was shared on Twitter by Nigeria News Desk on its verified handle, at Nigeria News Desk, with 1.6 million followers. Fact check. The claim that to be safe from coronavirus, shave your beard, is not a part of the preventive or treatment measures released by the CDC. Therefore, shaving beards doesn't prevent against coronavirus, as claimed by Today NG. CDD has spotted a lot of disinformation, misinformation, and fake news associated with the global health concern coronavirus, discovered in Chinese city of Wuhan that has killed many, particularly in that country. You see for yourself, so. You see, that's why we have to be careful with information. Information will just come out where you go spread everywhere. Go to say Nari. Check them again, no. Sometimes that picture way they look so. If you not be correct picture, you understand. Sometimes we like the video way they watch. If you not be recent video, if you say they don't, I just stand. They don't retire to lamb. That report where you they read. Where is it from? That text message you enter your phone. You don't check where whether that information correlates to other places. You need to verify. Fact checking is important. If on this show, we tell you how to fact check, how to run Google reverse image search, how to uh, make sure that information you get, and how to find the right source of information. Just so that you make sure you are, you are protected and protected. No, they carry more gist, though. That gist, that fake news, they carry now. It is sweet you today. Tomorrow, it will be your turn. All right, ladies and gentlemen, join in this conversation. Send us a message. Uh, follow CDD West Africa on Twitter, Instagram. Send us a DM. Uh, use the hashtag to lend your voice. If you want to share an experience with us, use the hashtag stop fake news or the hashtag 
fake news show. If you even tag myself, I go answer you. This program is an initiative of CBD West Africa with the support of USAID and NDR. Thank you for watching. Next week, I have another bumper packet for you. We go to shake, buddy. We go to shake things. And for longer, on behalf of the entire cast, I'll pull you the sign out. Keep watching and don't spread fake news. Thank you. of Center for Democracy and Development with support from USAID through the National Democratic Institute.